Martin. No. No, be watching. Oh, I'm ready. I'm gonna go get one right there. All right, how's everybody doing? Uh, I'm Jeremy Langwall coming to you live from Homeless House Estate and Gardens. And in honor of Mother's Day, I got my mom here, Lurleen Langwall, the person who showed me everything about cooking, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, mom, it's so good to have you uh, here today. And uh, I wanted to do something special in honor of Mother's Day. I wanted to have my mom on and I wanted to do my go-to. When I think of my mom, I think of this recipe. And this is Lurleen's pralines, right? So, so tell me a little about pralines. And when you think of pralines, what do you think of? Probably typically when we do pralines, it's normally around Christmas time. Is that normally when you would we would do them? When no, you would do them most up? of the time that's when I do them. And I actually started with my mom. Okay. And uh, we we would do them mainly for the holidays and sometimes for somebody's birthday if they requested. Okay. And. Um, I started doing cookies and pralines in honor of my, my mom passed away about 38 years ago. And I started making cookies and pralines for family members and friends uh, when she passed away. So it's, uh, every, it's every a, Christmas it's a we get buckets. It's yeah. a tradition. <laughs> I make buckets and uh, canisters for sure. the family and I also do it for the friends. So this is kind of one of my to-go recipes with the pralines. Yeah, so so whenever I started making pralines, I actually reached out to mom because I just knew she was making them because I was actually having a little bit of trouble making them. They just weren't coming out right. I wasn't sure when to scoop them. I wasn't sure how long to cook them. I wasn't sure the temperature when I first started making them because they do, there is a certain craft about well, knowing how to make them and when to scoop them. Right? I, I tell people that all the time. People ask me for my praline recipe and I tell them that I can give you the recipe it's you learn how to cook it and register it from putting it onto the sheet of uh, uh, wax paper or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because yeah. you got to get that glass, you got to stir them even after you take them off the fire and get the glass well, and look, well, look, look, you're getting ahead. Let's just do it. Let's just oh, show okay. so, so that's So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So, uh, so, what we're going to do is we're actually going to walk you through the pace and we're going to talk a little bit about this. But this is just a really simple recipe, just a couple ingredients. That's what I like about it. And look, guys out there, first of all, there's thousands of different praline recipes. Some that have butter, some where you put the butter in at the end, some where you throw the uh, pralines on the. Put your pecans in at the end of the recipe. We're going to talk about some of those things, but we're just going to go over this one. And if you know me, I always talk about, well, I don't like to measure. Well, when it comes to this recipe, what I mean by that is, if you're cooking a gumbo and it says one cup of onions, well, if you put two cups of onions, or if you put a, a little bit more onions, it's not going to mess up anything. Well, in this recipe, we want, to, we want to keep all our formulas right, but they're real simple. So what we have here is this is a cup of granulated sugar. We're going to throw that in the pot. A cup of light brown sugar. Half a cup of pecans a half a cup of evaporated milk, and we're gonna just start to whisk that together. Now first let me just talk about that, Mom, because the reason why I like to start anytime I'm cooking with a liquid, whether it be a roux, or whether it be something like pralines where we have this hot mixture, this is just a little tip where I like to have, I like to use a whisk, because sometimes at this point while it's still liquidy, if you were to use a spoon and it starts to get really hot, Sometimes as you're stirring it, you get little splashes. And let me tell you, if you're out there and you ever get that hot sugar to splash on you, that's going to burn. You don't want that. So if you use a whisk, it actually becomes a little bit easier for you to stir. And what I do is I actually, I'm going to, I got all these ingredients in, I whisk them up, and then what I do is I crank the, 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 uh, the heat. I'm on high. And what I'm looking to do is I want this to come up to a boil fairly quickly. I'm going to add one more ingredient to it. This is... Mexican vanilla, which I think that's your favorite, right? You like Mexican vanilla, right? Yes. Why do you like Mexican vanilla? Uh, I just like the flavor. Yeah, it's so a good strong vanilla flavor. Yeah, and and that, that that's right. So 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 guys out there, there's when it comes to vanilla, there's three different types of vanilla. There's Mexican vanilla, which I just put a capful in or a tablespoon. Um, um, there's Mexican vanilla, there's Tunisian vanilla, and there's Madagascar vanilla. Those are where you get your different vanilla beans, and each one are slightly different. And 
you're absolutely right. Mexican vanilla does make a darker, stronger vanilla, and then and then the, each one has their own little different, distinct characteristic. Now you look like you want to do something here. Here, you no, want to take it's over? Probably, and I want to tell you. Okay, it's well, not ready. Well, perfect. To, no, th that's right. So, so what's great about this recipe is. Right now, the mixture is coming, the sugar mixture is coming to a rapid boil. We all have these phones now. What I'm gonna show you is just how we can do this right here in real time. I'm gonna to go to my timer. Once this comes to a rapid boil, we're gonna set a timer for six minutes. So I got my six minute timer going. I'm gonna set that down right here. And we're just gonna, every now and then, once it's rapidly boiling, I have it on high, we crank it down to about medium high, but still a high thing. And then we're just gonna stir it every now and then. I'm gonna let you do that. So every now and then, just give it a little bit of a stir. Um, I thought since we, since we were just talking about vanilla and while we're while we're cooking for the six minutes, I thought something that might be fun is how we could just make some homemade vanilla at home. And now, if you go to grocery stores, oftentimes either in the baking section or different stores or specialty shops, they'll sell dried vanilla beans. And these are great for a making vanilla. Make, make sure it don't look. Make sure that okay. don't stick on the bottom, Mom. Okay. Get back to you now. <laughs> so, um, so what we're going to do is, um, we're going to make some homemade vanilla. I got a jar. I've already got some beans in there, but I want to show you. So, anytime you're ever working with vanilla beans at home, whether you're making a homemade ice cream or whether we're doing this, you just can't put the the vanilla bean in. You have to expose the vanilla pods, which are in the middle, or the vanilla seeds. So, what we do is, I'm just going to take a knife and I'm just gonna split the vanilla bean right in half and that's gonna expose the vanilla. If you've ever had vanilla bean ice cream and you see those little black specks, actually don't wanna scoop this out for making this, but for ice cream you would, you can use a knife and run it along the sides and that's how you get that vanilla out. But we're gonna, um, we're gonna just put a jar with six, five to six vanilla beans in the jar. And then what we're gonna do now, that's already starting to smell like probably. That's already, see it's already starting to cook, cook oh, yeah. So look, I'm, I know this is this is an ingredient you're very familiar with, especially since we moved out of the house. A little vodka, okay? No, so I'm like, probably <laughs> when y'all were in the house. <laughs> so, uh, so what I'm going to do is look. Uh, I'm going to just pour some vodka right into here using a funnel, and I'm putting the. Some people use bourbon. I like to use vodka because if you think vo think about vodka, vodka itself really it's an alcohol that doesn't have a lot of flavor like a rum or a bourbon. And while sometimes that's good, but I like what I like about using vodka is it gives it a neutral flavor. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to put a cap on it. And I'm going to give it just a little bit of a shake. And now we're just going to set this somewhere. We're going to leave this out, set it somewhere where it's not in direct sunlight. And we're just going to let it sit. Now this is going to be able to use in about six weeks. But once you get to six weeks, you can use that. This will stay good indefinitely. And what you want to do is... the refrigerator? No, no. You can leave it out. But what, I, but what you do want to do, Ma, is every now and then, whenever you just happen to think about it or walk by once a week, walk up to it and give it a little shake. And that's just going to keep everything mixing and everything, everything going. And what you can actually do is you can start to use this vanilla, just like how we used in this recipe. Uh, but over time, whenever this gets empty, you can actually come back with more vodka and you can fill this back up. You can do that one time per vanilla bean. So we got six vanilla beans in here. So we can refill this six times, and we're good to go. You got it? Pretty cool, uh, right? Is it as strong as vanilla? It, it's, I, I would probably say it's not going to be as strong as this Mexican vanilla, but it will have a great flavor. And if you did have something like bourbon, well, that's going to have a good flavor, too. Okay, so, uh, so as this starts to come together, we're just waiting on our timer. So as it starts to cook, I, I just since I got you here, tell me about... Some of, some of uh, your favorite things that you like to cook? Uh, carfish fettuccine. Yep, yeah, sure, sure. It's one yeah, of my okay. go dishes when we have all the family together. Uh, one of my real favorites and I cook from is st stuffed eggplant with shrimp and ground Yeah, we've, we've actually, we used to do a thing, and we need to get back into it, where mom would actually come to Homeless House for lunch. Once and she, a month. she would do the off the menu special. We did we did uh, stuffed eggplant one time that sold like hotcakes. Yeah. Um, and then I don't even know if you know this, but in honor of you, we have on our Mother's Day brunch that we're doing this Sunday, we have crawfish fettuccine on the menu. Oh, do you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know that, don't you? No, I didn't. You see that? You see that? Let's see how we're doing on our timer here. Okay, so, so so as it starts to stir, I can already see it's starting to come.
this recipe is you don't have to think about it, but what we're actually trying to do is we're trying to get this sugar mixture to a 240 degrees. That's what's known as when you're cooking sugar as the softball stage. What does softball mean? Well, one way that how back in the day how they would measure how uh, sugar was cooking is you would have a container with, like with cold water in it. You would put a little of that sugar into it and then it would form a little ball. And if the ball was a little mushy, well, that's softball. If it was a hard crack or a hard ball, that means it cooked a little longer. But 240 is the softball stage. That's what I used to do when I put probably into it my mom. Yep. The thing is you had to keep changing the water. You had to keep trying and trying. Yep. This recipe, you time, so... It yeah, it's time, so you don't just, have to worry about it. It makes it... Yeah, yeah. You let it come up to... The, and then what, what's going to happen is I'm actually starting to see it's coming together now. It's at that part, so we're going to start to stir it. And then... and. Oh yeah, it's off. Yep, yep. We've got. It. Yes, ma'am. My mom. She's a. Uh, she's already in my ear already. I'm used to it though. Um, and what we That's do is. That's what a mom's for. But what you want to want to do is right away. You can't scoop these pralines right onto your parchment paper or wax paper that you have at home because they actually won't solidify right. You actually have to work a little air into it and allow the uh, sugar mixture to just uh, cool down just a little bit, which we're pretty much at that stage now. But the thing, and what you know is, once once the pralines go, you kind of have to act a little bit fast because that sugar will, st when it starts to harden, what's it, how's it harden? Very quickly, right? Yeah. So, look at that, we're right on time. You can always put a little bit of extra evaporating milk too. Yep, yep, it starts it to harden on you. And I'm just popping them down. And then, uh, we'll get a couple on there on the, uh, I, I didn't do the neatest job, you're not gonna fuss anymore. Um, but, but, but what you wanna do is just let those sit and they're gonna start to chill and they're gonna start to harden. And then they're gonna be ready to go. Uh, and uh, that's how you make it. But a lot of times, people are confused of when do you when do you start to scoop them. You don't want to do it right away. What I like to say is, because each pot's going to be slightly different. Whenever it's too liquidy, whenever whenever the sugar mixture itself is too wet looking. So as you're stirring, if you, you can still see if the second you stir it and, and it just comes right back down and you can't see the bottom of the pan, well, it hasn't cooled down enough. But whenever as you're stirring, you can start to see the bottom of the pan. Well, then. Then you know it's almost like Moses parting, parting the seas. That, that's when you know when you when you scrape along. You like that metaphor, by the way. That's pretty clever, right? Um, well, well, whatever, uh, whatever you see that. Now you know it's kind of cooled enough where the mixture is starting to thicken enough where you can start to actually scoop these. Now look, I do want to let everybody know you have to be real careful with this hot sugar because it is. It's not like boiling water, which is 212 degrees. This is 240 degrees, so it's going to be really hot. But when they do start to harden, they do start to harden fairly quick. So, uh, so we're gonna put those on here. What else, Mom? What, 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 what else we need to uh, go over while I got you here? Well, uh, for one, we need to go, go over that 41 years ago today, I became oh, a mom oh, for the geez. second time. <laughs> and little did I know that he would become a chef. Happy uh, birthday. Oh, uh, happy today. Yep, and it's so cool to have you here. And, and for you guys, we're, 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 look, we're looking to get back to just as normal life as we can, as quickly as possible. Uh, we'd love to have you over here at Homeless House. We're doing our takeout menus and, um, and uh, that we're doing daily. We're also doing our special Mother's Day uh, this Sunday. And, and we would just love to have you. Lots of, Homeless House is a great place. You want to get out of the house, lots of room to come. Yeah, I know you've come and just walked around because you were bored at home. I've been, you live close by. I've been several times, twice last week, and it's, it's beautiful. You hit the bar up every time too, don't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, she, you're not, you can't lie live on Facebook. Well, anyway, Mom. Stop, stop picking on me. Mom, it's so awesome to have you here. I love you. Happy Mother, Happy early Mother's Day. And to all the moms out there, happy Mother's Day. My wife's right behind the camera. Happy Mother's Day to her. Jesse, happy, who's behind the camera as well, happy Mother's Day to Jesse. Uh, Y'all have a great day. Y'all be safe out there.